Find out what is happening at the library from virtual programming to fun new services. Hear recommendations on books, movies, TV shows, and so much more. This is In the Stacks at Mustang Library. Hi everyone, welcome to In the Stacks. Every year in the library world in May, we celebrate something called Mystery Month. And later on in this program, we're gonna ask our staff what their favorite mystery picks are. But first, we're gonna take a look at the Mystery Writers of America and the 2021 Edgar Allan Poe Awards. These were announced on April 29th, 2021, and they honor the best in mystery fiction, nonfiction, and television published or produced in 2020, commonly referred to as the Edgar Awards. Let's take a look at the winners. For best novel, the winner was Gin Patrol on the Purple Line by Deepa Anapara, Penguin Random House, Random House. Best first novel by an American author went to Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen, Simon & Schuster, Gallery Books. Best Paperback Original was awarded to When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole, HarperCollins Publishers, William Morrow. Best Fact Crime was awarded to Death in Mudlick, A Coal Country Fight Against the Drug Companies That Delivered the Opiate Epidemic by Eric Ayer, Simon & Schuster, Scribner. And Best Critical Biographical went to Phantom Lady, Hollywood producer Joan Harrison, The Forgotten Woman Behind Hitchcock by Christina Lane, Chicago Review Press. So congratulations to all the Edgar Allan Poe Award winners. All of these books can be found in the Scottsdale Public Library catalog. Now we're gonna take a look at what our staff recommends as far as their favorite mysteries. my mystery picks. Ah, oh, the smell of the freshly baked croissant, the bustle of the sidewalk cafes. Are we in Paris or are we reading yet another Inspector Maigret mystery? George Siminot wrote 75 mystery novels about French police detective chief superintendent Jules Maigret of the Paris Criminal Investigation Division, known simply as Maigret to us. Even his wife calls him Maigret. The appeal of the Maigret series for me is Maigret's personality. He's calm, methodical, intuitive. He knows his job. He knows people and what people are capable of, you know, like murder, covering up murder, lying to the police, lying about lying, you know. And yet he isn't cynical. He doesn't talk down to his colleagues or the criminals. Another thing I appreciate about these novels, they're short. You can finish a book before you need to go back and reread character names. Each story begins immediately and I'm usually hooked on the first page. The author, Simenon, wrote entirely in French. The Maigret series, written from the 1930s through the 1970s, has been translated several times, but recently Penguin Books published new English translations of each novel, which many say are the best translations so far. Scottsdale Public Library owns several of the Maigret novels in this newest translation. So if you're in the mood for Paris, you're not turned off by pipe smoking, frequent partaking of cognac and calvados, you may enjoy any one of the many Maigret novels. For something similar in style, try Madeline Nabb's Marshall Garnicchia novels. They're set in Florence, Italy. Nabb was a fan of Simenon's writings before she started writing her own books. And her books are very similar. They're also short. Or perhaps you just wanna read some Paris guidebooks. The library has plenty of those. Or try out a delectable French bread recipe. These are all in our stacks. The first book I'm gonna to recommend today is I Sniper. I Sniper is the sixth book in the Bob Lee Swagger book series by Stephen Hunter. Hunter's books are the basis for the 2007 movie Shooter with Mark Wahlberg and a television series of the same name starring Ryan Felipe. In my opinion, while they are both good, the books are much better. But then again, what would you expect a librarian to say? 
The Bob Lee Swagger in the books is a retired Marine Corps Vietnam veteran and one of the most successful snipers in U.S. military history. During the war, he becomes severely wounded and is forced into medical retirement from the Marine Corps. Therefore, he becomes a depressed alcoholic. Because of his expertise, he is called upon by the U.S. government to consult on cases involving long-range shooters. At first hesitant and distrustful of the government, he finds that being back on the hunt brings him out of his depression and helps him recover from his alcoholism. In this novel, the FBI enlists 64-year-old Bob Lee's help in investigating the murders of several prominent 1960s Vietnam War protesters. Although the evidence initially points to former Marine sniper Carl Hitchcock, Bob Lee quickly discovers that Hitchcock was framed for the murders and sets out to find the real killer. His investigation takes him into the world of modern military sniper warfare. This action-packed mystery is filled with fast-paced writing and edge-of-your-seat twists and turns. If you're looking for a well-written action-adventure thriller mystery, this is your book. For my second book, I recommend Celine by Peter Heller. The title character in Peter Heller's novel Celine is a 68-year-old aristocratic private eye who specializes in reuniting families. Celine has made a career of tracking down missing persons. When a young woman named Gabriella asks for her help, Celine finds herself in a world of mystery and family secrets. Gabriella's father went missing on the border of Montana and Wyoming, and it was assumed that he died from a grizzly bear mauling but his body was never found. Now, as Celine and her partner head to Yellowstone National Park to investigate, it becomes clear that they're being followed, and there is more to this mystery than a simple missing persons case. One of my favorite mysteries is by best-selling author Lisa Jewell called Then She Was Gone. This book is available from the Scottsdale Public Library, both as a e-media resource it is available in audio, in ebook, and it is also available in print. Then She Was Gone is a novel that begins about a girl named Ellie Mack. Ellie was the perfect daughter. She was 15, the youngest of three, beloved by her parents, friends, and teachers, and was half of a teenage golden couple. Ellie was days away from an idyllic post-exam summer vacation with her whole life ahead of her. And then she was gone. Now, her mother, Laurel Mack, is trying to put her life back together. It's been 10 years since her daughter disappeared, seven years since her marriage ended, and only months since the last clue in Ellie's case was unearthed. So, when Laurel meets an unexpectedly charming man in a cafe, no one is more surprised at how quickly their flirtation develops into something deeper. Before she knows it, She's meeting Floyd's daughters, and his youngest, Poppy, takes Laurel's breath away. Because looking at Poppy is like looking at Ellie. And now, the unanswered questions she's tried so hard to put to rest begin to haunt Laurel again. Where did Ellie go? Did she really run away from home as the police have long suspected? Or was there something more sinister behind her disappearance? Who is Floyd really? And why does his daughter remind Laurel so much of her own missing girl? Find out when you read this dark, compulsive, psychological thriller that is definitely a page-turner that will be very hard to put down. Thank you to Fantastic Fiction for their review of Lisa Jewell's Then She Was Gone. Hi, this is Tiffany from the Mustang Library. The first book I will be reviewing is The Silent Patient by Alex Michaelides. Alicia Berenson is accused of killing her husband in a violent and shocking manner. Forensic psychotherapist Theo Faber is out to solve this case, and in doing so, he hopes to resolve some mysteries of his own. I liked this book because I learned about a Greek tragedy that I've never heard of before. Um, which is the story of Alcestis. And this tragedy is woven into the fabric of the story and relates to the story in some interesting ways. Uh, for me, this book shed a new light on psychotherapy, um, connecting the past to the present, and getting to the heart of a tragedy. I was kept in suspense until the very end of this book. So if you love a good thriller, Try out The Silent Patient 
by Alex Michaelides. For my next book, I will be reviewing Crocodile on the Sandbank by Elizabeth Peters. Amelia Peabody is a British spinster until her father dies and leaves her a large sum of money. Amelia immediately heads to Egypt to pursue her dreams of archaeology and discovery of the Egyptian empire. Sparks fly when she meets Emerson, an archaeologist with an explosive temper and a passion for Egyptology. Some of my favorite scenes from this book include floating down the Nile with Amelia and the traveling companion she meets along the way. There are 19 more installments of this series. If you love Egyptology and archaeology, you won't want to miss this series. Hi, I'm Jennifer at Mustang Library, and I'm going to talk to you about a couple of mystery books that I have enjoyed. I don't typically read mysteries, so it's unusual for me to have picked these two, but I hope you will enjoy them as well. So the first one is called The Never Open Desert Diner by James Anderson. And this is a novel that tells the story of a loner named Ben Johnson who drives a truck in a very isolated part of Utah. He makes deliveries to an assortment of people who are living away from society, either by circumstance or choice. One of these is Walt, owner of the Never Open Desert Diner, who keeps the diner in its original condition, but opens for no one. He's a cranky man, but he and Ben have learned to get along. On one delivery trip, Ben discovers a woman living in an abandoned house in a neighborhood that was never finished. Who she is and why she is there is the mystery that slowly unfolds with tragic consequences. The descriptions of the harsh and beautiful landscape are amazingly detailed and evocative. More than just a mystery, it is a look into the choices we make and how we live with them. He also has a second novel called Lullaby Road. However, it is not considered a mystery, but it again takes place in Utah with Ben as the delivery driver. Never Open Desert Diner has a lot of unanswered questions at the beginning, but it all comes together by the end and it's well worth the ride. The second book I picked was First Falls the Night by Julia Keller. She's written multiple novels. They have a recurring character called Belle Elkins. She's a prosecutor in their small Appalachian town. A drug overdose in a gas station bathroom is just the beginning. Belle Elkins, a prosecutor, is racing against time to find out where the tainted batch of drugs is coming from before even more residents die. At the same time, Belle must come to terms with some hard truths about herself. The setting is an all too familiar one of a town dealing with poverty, unemployment, and addiction. A variety of characters are involved in the story, each of whom is facing a struggle of their own. Based on a true story, keeps you engaged until the very end, desperate to find answers and solutions for this town and its people. The writing is descriptive without being overdramatic. The novel asks some tough questions such as how do you spend resources on people who do not want help? How does a community look after its own? Although Belle is a great core character, this novel is well able to stand on its own. One of the best books I have read and routinely recommend to readers is I Let You Go by Claire McIntosh. This was Macintosh's debut book. She has written several since, but this has always been, in my opinion, her best and favorite to date. I Let You Go is a psychological thriller that centers around Jenna, a woman desperate to escape her past. She moves to a remote cottage on the Welsh coast, but she is haunted by her fears, her grief, and her memories of a cruel November night that changed her life forever. Dubbed as one of the best, most unforgettable twists you'll ever read, this book is not to be missed by anyone who loves a good thriller. If you love B.A. Paris, Sherry LaPena, or Ruth Ware, you will devour this author. Look for her newest book titled Hostage, expected to hit bookshelves on June 22nd. Next up is The Killer Across the Table by John E. Douglas and Mark Olshaker. You might recognize these authors. They are known for a little book and a follow-up series on Netflix titled Mindhunter. It is absolutely fabulous. In this book, Douglas delves deeper into cases that have long haunted him, including some of the ones that are portrayed in the Netflix series. Touching upon famous cases such as John JonBenet Ramsey, he recounts killers in interviews that have shaped his career. Like the hit Netflix show, 
the killer across the table is centered around Douglas's unique interrogation and profiling process, a must read for any true crime lover. Both these books can be found in our catalog and available at Scottsdale Public Library. Thank mm -hmm. you.